communists are saying that Walmart is socialist, and since Walmart works, that means socialism can work. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Marx in the 1840s, capitalism will develop into socialism. Mises in the 1920s, socialism is impossible because centrally planning an economy is impossible. Capitalism develops into a centrally planned economy. And then he references this book, People's Republic of Walmart, that argues that Walmart does central planning, therefore the government can do central planning and socialism works. It's absolutely absurd. To explain why, first we need to talk about this guy. Ludwig von Mises. Mises was an economist born in Austria in 1881, and he was an incredibly brilliant man. By the time he was 12, he knew multiple languages fluently. Later in life, he got into economics and became one of the most influential and greatest economists of all time, and one of his main contributions was critiquing socialism. In 1920, he presented a critique of socialism called the Economic Calculation Problem. Now let's talk about what that critique entails. This is a book by Peter Bodecki, a professor of economics at George Mason University. Economic calculation refers to the decision-making ability to allocate scarce capital resources among competing uses. To elaborate on that real quick, here's Per Bylin, a professor of economics at Oklahoma State University. Our means are limited, but our wants are not. We must figure out how to make as much as possible with the little we have. Every choice we make and every action we take means that we forego what we did not choose. For example, either you take the car for a drive or you stay home. You cannot do both at the same time. By choosing one thing or another, we rank things value to us. We economize. The economy is all of us economizing. And what we're talking about here is economizing on capital goods, the goods that are going into production. For example, let's say our capital good is one ton of steel. It's not infinite, it's scarce. We can't send one ton there and two tons there and four tons there. Doesn't work like that. With that in mind, here is the argument summarized. Without private property in the means of production, there will be no market for the means of production. Without a market for the means of production, there will be no monetary prices established for the means of production. Without monetary prices reflecting the relative scarcity of capital goods, economic decision makers will be unable to rationally calculate the alternative use of capital goods. Since the socialists want to abolish private property, they will have no way to economize on capital goods, and that is incredibly important. Again, that's what the economy is all about. Mises is not saying socialism is impossible, that's a straw man. He's saying the socialists cannot economically calculate. And using Walmart as a rebuttal to this clearly doesn't work because Walmart has private property. Walmart has prices, and it calculates in the exact same way that Mises explains. When socialists try to allocate capital goods without economizing, it ends in absolute disaster. When the Bolsheviks took over in Russia, they tried moneyless planning and millions of people starved to death. Historian William Chamberlain described this period in Russia's economic history as one of the greatest and most overwhelming failures in history. The Bolsheviks had to reintroduce money and reintroduce private property in order to recover from this absolute disaster. That was the new economic policy. In China, it was very similar. The government under Mao got rid of private property, and as a result, the government was setting the prices of capital goods, or production materials. 100% of these prices were set by the government and 0% by the market. Tens of millions of people starved to death. It was absolute disaster and impoverishment. Then things changed after Mao. The government started reintroducing market prices and economic calculation was back. As a result, millions of people were brought out of extreme poverty and China was finally able to compete with other countries economically. I'm using these historical examples to show you what this looks like in practice, but also because the communists will say, oh look, socialist countries have existed before, therefore Mises was wrong. No, these prove Mises was right. When the socialist countries didn't use markets and prices as much as possible, their entire economies were in free fall. And even when they did use them a little bit, they still couldn't come even close to competing with the capitalist nations, and they still were complete economic disasters. Just a little less so than the moneyless planning. Now, if you want to learn more about economic calculation and economics in general, I recommend reading How to Think About the Economy. It's a very short and simple book. I'm especially looking at the socialists. You guys better go learn economics.